So I've been one of those self-righteous, sanctimonious, preachy, moral high ground type vegans for nine years now. No, I'm only joking. I would like to think I'm, I'm pretty relaxed, pretty low key about it. But during those nine years, I've lost some body fat, got in much better shape and improved my physical fitness. But I want to be very clear here. None of that happened because I'm vegan. It happened because I based most of my diet around whole foods. So in this video, I'm gonna break down a simple game plan to help you be a whole foods vegan, do things in a more healthful way, so you can actually get that scale moving in the next 30 days. Step one, everyone at this point knows that you lose weight by being in a calorie deficit. When your body can't find that energy, in layperson's terms, calories that it needs, it will start using that stored body fat as fuel. The great news is staying in a deficit of calories is significantly easier when you eat lots of whole foods. You see, whole foods tend to have a much lower calorie density than processed foods. There are exceptions, of course, but that's the general rule. So put simply, it's obviously harder to maintain a calorie deficit if you're eating lots of processed foods because of all the calories they contain. So with that in mind, here's what I'm gonna suggest that you mostly avoid. Vegan cheeses, number one. That stuff is, pfft, that's the, it's honestly lethal, man. Number two, oils. Yes, I know they're often heralded as a healthy fat source, but we're gonna get those healthy fats straight from the natural source itself instead. Number three, typical takeout foods, pizza, vegan burgers, and so on. And of course, sweet treats and desserts. Again, there are some exceptions, but ice cream, brownies, chocolate, donuts, candy, and so on. So yeah, most people know this, but sadly I feel lots of new vegans make this mistake. Vegan does not automatically mean healthy. So step number one, get this stuff out of your fridge, out your freezer, out your pantry, delete those darn food delivery apps off your phone for goodness sakes and tell your friends that you're gonna miss pizza night for a little while. Step two, now you know what to mostly avoid to give yourself a better chance of staying in a calorie deficit. You might be thinking, hold on a minute, Rye, you've taken away all my goodies here. What should I be eating then? What's left? High fiber whole foods from the six main plant food groups, whole grains such as oats and brown rice, legumes such as beans and lentils, tubers like potato, sweet potato and yams, vegetables, of course, fruits, and finally nuts and seeds. Between these six food groups, you'll get the vast majority of nutrients you need and, with the exception being nuts and seeds, they all tend to be quite low in calories. Massive advantage. A popular breakfast for my clients, something like rolled oats cooked in soy milk. We've got some banana here. Then berries of choice. In this case, we've gone for strawberries. We've got a tablespoon or so of milled flaxseed here. And then just a little drizzle of maple syrup for some of that sweetness. This is a lunch I personally love. Simple grain and bean plates here. We've got quinoa, black beans, a little bit of sauerkraut, some rocket slash arugula for my friends across the pond here. We've got some cherry toms, bit of avocado there. There's a little bit of hot sauce on the black beans. Alternatively, I might just take a balsamic glaze or a vinaigrette and just sling that over. And for dinner, baked sweet potato, golden crispy tofu, for which I'll put my recipe down below. Very simple marinade and then some tender stem broccoli, a bit of lemon tahini dressing as well drizzled on there. For snacks, fresh fruit, or alternatively, a little bit of whole wheat toast with some hummus and cucumber slices there, great combo. Or if you're one of those protein people, you can always do a, a plant protein powder in shake form. And that's it, pretty simple stuff as you can see. No fancy recipes, nothing too elaborate. Lots of low calorie foods, but also lots of fiber here. And fiber is important, as you very well know, for so many reasons. But from a weight loss perspective, fiber is amazing at keeping you fuller for longer, basically less room for that unhealthy stuff. Step three, if you want the secret to losing weight without breaking a sweat, I've got it for you right now, walking. I know, just walking, right? A lot of dieters have been told that they need to do cardio to lose fat or zone two training, or they have to lift weights. Basically, insert whatever exercise methodology said guru is trying to promote at the time. But this is all nonsense. Again, you lose weight by being deficient in calories, causing your body to go to the stored fat and release it for energy. So technically you can lose weight both with and without exercise. But I do argue in most cases, 
it's probably easier to be in a calorie deficit doing some exercise. But you can start with something as simple as a little bit of walking. And walking is actually great for weight loss, arguably underrated, because it doesn't spike appetite like more intense forms of exercise do, even if the same amount of calories are burned. Now, there's no magic amount of walking that you should or you must do, like the arbitrary 10K steps, for example. Just get yourself out walking consistently for now, and if your weight is being stubborn, you could then always think about adding a certain number of sort of steps as a target to your, your daily routine. But lastly, step four. What if this game plan doesn't actually work? You're following it to a T, but you're not losing weight. Or maybe you were at first, but you've suddenly hit one of those stubborn plateaus. Well, there's two options. One, increase exercise to burn a few more calories over the week. Or number two, decrease your calorie intake via diet to ensure that you're in a significant enough deficit to see results on the scale week to week. Now, keep in mind, to decrease your calorie intake, you don't actually need to track your calories. Remember, the weighing scale is a feedback system that tells you how effective your plan and your current meals are. So if the scale isn't actually dropping, it's telling you that you're eating too many calories to lose weight. It's a sign that something isn't quite right with your meals or that you're not actually as consistent as you're telling yourself you are. You can reduce your calorie intake slightly simply by, number one, reducing your portions a little bit. Number two, using fewer fat-rich plant foods like avocado, nuts, seeds, nut butters, tahini, and so on. Or, number three, simply reducing the amount of snacks you're eating per day, even if they're healthy snacks. And that's it, your 30-day game plan. Of course, we hope that you do this beyond 30 days, but so that you don't get overwhelmed or daunted about committing to this forever, I think there's no shame in treating this like a 30-day experiment. And if you feel good, you get results you're pleased with, and you start to build new healthy habits, well, there's not a chance that you're gonna stop at the 30-day mark anyway. So I hope this plan helps you get results like it did for my clients, like it did for myself. But if you do want me to personally coach you through my exact process so that you can lose 15 to 25 pounds in the next 12 weeks, eating simple plant-based meals, then fill out the form at the link in the description box down below, and I'll be in touch to tell you more about my Slim and Sustain program. Talk soon.